Okay, so <clears throat> I was just explaining to you uh, the zonation algorithm and what are actually the removal rules that zonation will use to calculate the particular marginal loss of a given cell. And that marginal loss is a very important uh, thing to be calculated because it was, it will be the thing that will be used to define the priority rank of the cell, right? So I hope you don't have doubts on that. We're going to <clears throat> make an exercise, uh, maybe 12 minutes, 30 minutes from now. <clears throat> and in this exercise, we'll compare the effect of running an analysis using uh, core area, uh, zonation, and another analysis using additive benefit functions and the benefit function, and we will compare the results so you can see what is the actual effect of <coughs> using one of these things, okay? So just show you some other recent uh, examples using zonation. <coughs> I'm picking this one, this is aligning, uh, aligning conservation priorities in Madagascar, and just because Dimby is one of the authors of this paper that ended up published in Science, but the, the thing is, this is one of the most extensive examples of conservation prioritization we have uh, to now. So the authors use a very extensive surrogacy analysis with many, many different taxa they're using, all major taxa they have there, and a lot of endemic species. <coughs> they're using invertebrates, ants, uh, goes in the analysis. And they're doing at a very high resolution for all Madagascar. So they're doing that for uh, uh, less than one kilometer uh, resolution. And the idea is to extend uh, proposed areas in uh, conservation areas in Madagascar. <coughs> so they did analysis using zonation, and we now know that they do use Mark Sun as well. And they have those maps that uh, Dimby had showed to you, so I don't have to spend much time here. And this is just to illustrate the typical zonation uh, solution <coughs> we have. So this is uh, top priority areas, and then if you go to yellow, blue, and red areas here, you will be able to protect about, to extend the protected areas to a 10% level of the country. This is the very, uh, <clears throat> typical output you get from zonation is the rank of priorities of these systems. So you can also balance in between competing land uses. Since, since zonation, uh, the, the third version of zonation, you can <clears throat> do that by having negative weights on each feature you want. So you were asking about how to have multiple costs and things like that. The fact is, if you look at that formula that you use to calculate the marginal loss uh, in the core area zonation, for example, there is only one cost, okay? That's the cost for site I. <clears throat> but here you have different things. You have a solution that is trying to maximize the retention of biodiversity only, without considering any costs in the UK. You have another one that's trying to avoid areas that are particularly good for agriculture expansion. So you, you have a solution that do not pick up places in which agriculture is, uh, <clears throat> will be happening or is happening today. You can also minimize the conflict with urban areas. You can just exclude these areas from the analysis. So it will, they will not be considered as priority because you can do much thing in those kind of areas. And you can also have different strategies like you can maximize <coughs> the, the retention you want to have a match of the conservation priority areas with areas that are, uh, has been targeted by carbon sequestration. So you can have some kind of coping strategies like uh, red or red plus with conservation uh, of biodiversity and conservation planning. So you can have similar strategies that considers uh, both things at the same time. Level representation of species and important areas for carbon sequestration, okay? So how would we do that? How can you do that if zonation only allows you to get one value of cost? So the thing is, <clears throat> before version number three, 
you can have some kind of combined values of all this. So you have a unique value that represents uh, all these four competing uh, uh, land uses, like protecting biodiversity or avoiding areas that are suitable for agriculture. You can do that in many ways. You can just have a standardized scale with Z values, like Tiago was explaining yesterday. You can have a principal component analysis and extract the first or the second axis and use this as a cost. But since Zonation 3, you can just uh, tell Zonation that biodiversity is a feature. You have the distribution of the species and the weights of their species are positive because you want to maximize uh, the retention of species in the landscape. But you can also have uh, a layer that's actually a raster saying to you what are the places that are best suited, suited for agriculture. So what are you going to do? You, you have a, a raster file with uh, this information and then you, you put a negative weight in zonation because the result will be pretty much the same. What you do is when you're calculating the relative importance for agriculture of that cell, you might remember that we can multiply this value for a weight. And if this weight is positive, it means that that cell is more important for uh, the prioritization. But if you put a negative uh, value on that uh, feature, it means that this feature should be avoided it actually will decrease the value of the marginal loss of the cell. Okay? So you have rasters for species distribution, and you have one raster for agriculture, another raster for urbanization, another raster with uh, good areas for carbon sequestration, and you put a, a positive weight here because you want to select sites in which carbon sequestration is higher, but you put a negative weight here and here because you want to avoid sites conflicting with agricultural expansion and urbanization. Okay, So <clears throat> the result would be pretty much the same. You're uh, lowering the value of that cell, <clears throat> the marginal value of that cell, and that means that the cell is not that important compared to any other. So you can have multiple features with positive or negative weights, and then you can see the results separating in those uh, <coughs> performance curves. Okay? Or you can have all this mixed together uh, with a, just a single value that represents all of it. It's up to you. And then you treat it like a formal cost. Okay? <coughs> and you can do that. So, sorry. Here we have a solution that maximizes biodiversity retention. And this one, for example, is the solution that maximizes biodiversity retention while avoiding agriculture, agricultural areas. But you can have all this put together in a single analysis and you will end up with a map that shows what are the priorities considering everything at the same time. So when I say that this place is top priority, what I'm saying is that this is good for carbon sequestration for biodiversity for avoiding conflicts with agriculture and with urbanization. Okay? It's all being optimized <coughs> together. Uh, I'll have to give you another example from the Cerrado where we do that. Just you can see we can balance these uh, conflicting interests. And we did that. Oh, that's not it, sorry. That's, that's the very same as example I give you. So you can consider the effects of climate change, including species distributions, future species distributions, <coughs> and stuff. That is the one I'm saying. If you want to consider the trade-offs in conservation priorities, you can have uh, different features like what is the distribution of human population density in the Brazilian Cerrado, in that case. What is the land cost? This is not actually land cost. This is a proxy we're using like the gross uh, income of the municipality as uh, a surrogate for cost. Uh, then what I'm calling here anthropic land use, this is uh, the amount of remain native habitat. Okay, so here is habitat, what's most, uh, the dark, uh, darkish uh, colors here are known native habitats. 
And then you can have this kind of environmental governance or what we've been calling uh, political willingness to act. This is actually a variable that's the, the proportion, if you, if you pick for each municipality in the Cerrado, and you go after the proportion of the total budget this mun municipality has to <coughs> invest in anything, what is the amount of that budget that has been allocated to environmental uh, solutions or to resolve environmental problems, okay? So you have to, to build hospitals, you have to invest in education, allocate resource for law enforcement, something like that. But part of that budget you will uh, allocate to environmental issues. So what this variable means is that this region or these places have allocated a greater part of their annual budget, budget for solving environmental issues. And this will be a kind of a political willingness to ask, to, to, to act, okay? They're just doing more things related to the environment here than here, or they're prioritizing environmental issues uh, beyond other aspects, okay? And then you can combine this using those different weights, so a positive weight for biodiversity, a negative weight for human population density or uh, land use transfer land transformation, and a positive weight for political willingness to act. So we want to maximize, you want to select places in which political willingness to act will be higher, and want to avoid places in which there, there are many people or uh, that do have high rates of habitat loss, for example, okay? And then you can compare uh, all of these solutions. So we'll compare uh, two of these solutions with you. This is letter, yes, letter F here. It's the solution that ignores everything. It's just thinking about biodiversity. Okay, biodiversity curve is that one, that uh, dark here, you can see, you can see. So you have the proportion of the Cerrado being prioritized from zero to nothing, and have the proportion of the species remaining. So if I want to, to protect, for example, 20% of the Cerrado that will be here, I'm getting about 40% on average of its species distribution, okay? Right? So that blue dotted line is the line for the amount of cost I get to this. So if I'm trying to prioritize 20%, then the total cost of my action will be about half uh, of all possible costs I could have in the Cerrado. This is pretty much high, okay? On the, water, uh, on the other way, here is the solution that we've been trying to avoid areas with high land, uh, land cost. So we're, we're reducing the cost of the action. If you take a look at this uh, line, which is for the species distribution, at the same 20%, we can have about 30% of species distribution protected. But the cost here is less than 20% of whole Sahara. It's actually about something like 17% of the total cost I could have. So here we have about 50% of, of the costs and 17% of the cost. And if you can compare these two selections, these two solutions, this is the one in which we try to balance everything together. Okay, so here I'm trying to protect biodiversity alone, ignoring costs, and here I'm including the costs of having many people and, and costs of uh, habitat transformation, and trying to increase political willingness to act in biodiversity protection. So for this 17% of this Cerrado, that will be the target <laughs> Brazil set for conserving the, the domain. We have about 30% of the distribution of the species being protected. That would be this black line here. 
And costs in this solution, sorry, costs in this solution, that the solution that combines everything, okay, they are a 50% lower than the costs on these solutions, okay? So we have down the cost 50% lower than this one, and political willingness to act is 15% lower than when we think only about biodiversity. So when you have a solution that combines everything and you're trying to optimize everything together, you have some kind of trade-off because the level of species representation will go down. You cannot represent that amount of species here because you are constraining the analysis with much other variables, many other variables. But you can reduce the cost and you can increase by 25% the political willingness to act. That could means that you, you can in, increase the chances of the plan getting actually established. Okay? The good thing is that you can do that and you can compare these performance curves so you can understand how the variables you are measuring actually respond to the level of the, of the landscape you are trying to protect. Okay? So, oops. So, <laughs> yeah. so nation, so complex resource allocation, uh, problems in biodiversity conservation and management. You can, you can have many interesting solutions to be there. You can also include species specific features to account for connectivity, habitat quality and other things. You should be prepared to spend a lot of time preparing data for data collection and preparing input data to be used in zonation. And you know the complexity of the problems depend on your own creativity and imagination. So you can have any kind of variable that relates to the things you are trying to protect. Like the total amount of the budget that was spent in environmental issues. It could be a surrogate for political willingness to act. Or <clears throat> you can use it. You know, any, any other variables that relates to cost would be interesting. Uh, and it can find a balanced solution for competitive land use so you can discuss with stakeholders. But bear in mind that you can have the same problem that team we have. When you go for a negotiation to a discussion and you have many, many solutions, people can, got, can get lost in the discussion. And they can take a look and say, so what's the solution? What is the best? Okay? That's why we always tend to do, we have different scenarios, but we tend to present an all, the whole scenario with everything because people would be very interested in having one map, one solution, and one uh, thing on the table to discuss. Right? So after this, I'm going to present you some kind of um, what is the zonation workflow, how the data gets uh, into it, and then we can run some analysis zonation and discuss the results, okay? So far, so good?